Hello and welcome to the Press Start Podcast, Press Start Australia's weekly video game discussion podcast brought to you today by SteelSeries and their new range of alias microphones. Their mics made for gamers and you can see they've kitted us out. So big thank you to Steel to Steel Series for sponsoring the show. I'm your host, you and joined today by my fellow gamers and co-hosts, Shannon. Hello. Brody. Hello. James. Hello. And Karen. Hello. Later on the show, I'm going to be telling you more about these new mics we're using, but also The Last of Us Part 2 remaster being announced, Borderlands 4 and Tiny Tina's Wonderland seemingly leaking, and the studio behind Immortals of Avium. James, am I pronouncing that correctly? Is it Avium? I don't really know. Any, I've forgotten, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is Avium. Uh, the the studio behind Immortals of Avium blaming unfortunate layoffs on poor sales in a crowded market. I'm sure that will be an interesting conversation. But first, James, I'm coming back your way because I'm eager to hear about Super Mario RPG. The last time we spoke about it, you were able to share some of your initial impress- impressions having previewed the game. But obviously, you've played the full thing now. I'm eager to hear what your thoughts were overall. Yeah, um, my thoughts were good. Uh, I enjoyed it, and that's it. It's um, <laughs> yeah. I I I remember. I I've obviously misremembered this because I remember like Karen was like, "Didn't everyone think it was hard?" And I was like, "No, they didn't." But then all the reviews came out, and everyone was like, "It's easier than before." So I don't know if I misremembered it or not, but it is easier now. So if anyone found it hard <laughs> before, um, it is easier to play now. Um, but that's because obviously there is an easier mode as well, but also just all these little quality of life changes once again, mm. um, that kind of just make it flow better as it, cause it was an RPG from the SNES era. So there are some things there that, you know, don't go as well as they did back then. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like it, it flows well. Um, I guess the, I, I enjoyed it. Like I've, I, I've never finished it before. This is the first time I finished it obviously. And, um, I, I don't really have a lot. There's not a lot wrong with it. I do wish it was a tad harder, um, which maybe <laughs> was apparently not the goal of the remake anyway. So maybe I just wasn't the target audience, um, but they added an easy mode. So I was like, why couldn't they just add a hard mode as well? Um, there's a lot of cool stuff that they've added to it as well, but it's all post game stuff, which the original game didn't really have a lot of. So I think that's a really cool thing to have all this optional kind of soul crushing stuff. <laughs> it's like really tough. Um, that the original game didn't have so yeah um is it gonna change your mind about turn-based combat probably not uh but it is definitely a f- good game for somebody to sink into because i feel like a lot of people get put off by rpgs these days because they are so long and no one well some people do but not everyone has you know 30 to 60 hours to sink into a game like this um but i'm like pretty happy to report this is like solid 15 to 20 hours i would say um so it doesn't overstay its welcome at all uh it's a it's also a very interesting like part of nintendo's history like there's so many characters creatures monsters that don't appear in anything else uh, like besides this game so there's like like it's like this this mean yoshi called boshi who has like boshi. sunglasses sunglasses Is that the racing one? bracelets yeah yeah so like you know he means business because he's like been mean to all the other Yoshis on the island. So, <laughs> yeah. But like, I was like, why have they never brought Boshi back? Like, he's he's badass. You know. Oh my <laughs> goodness! I'm looking up pictures of Boshi now. Yeah. Very cool. I approve. Absolutely. I don't know. Like, there's just there's a lot of like really weird, oddball kind of humor in there too that I, I don't think Nintendo's ever really touched upon again. They've gotten close with Paper Mario and Mario and Luigi. Um, but it's a very unique kind of like time capital of that era. So I think it's definitely worth trying. Um, yeah. How do you rate this year overall for the switch? I feel like we've had some bangers. Amazing. Like last year was dog shit. Like this year is the <laughs> best year for switch. I think like, I think they've not really missed. Have they missed it? Oh, everybody won to switch maybe. Um, <laughs> which I think they probably released. hoping everyone would forget about it. And they were successful in that way. So I guess that's also a success for them. I mean, Um, like, like, I guess with Mario Wonder and Tears of the Kingdom, obviously, we probably haven't had, like, as big a year for Switch Bangers since launch, I would argue, with, like, kind of Odyssey and Breath of the Wild. Yeah, I, obviously, I haven't, like, put them into lists by year and stuff, so I don't don't know for sure, and I don't want to be... Metroid Prime Remastered as well this year, too, it's been pretty good. Absolutely. Well, that alone is enough, Um, but... (laughs) 
when did Metro Dread come out? Whenever that year was. Um, True. Actually, I think that was a bad year. That was a bad year last. Was it last year or the year before? I, I don't know. I was definitely playing. But co- yes. I had COVID when I was playing Metro Dread, so maybe that contextualizes it. That's twenty twenty one. That that helps. <laughs> That's a very helpful comment. Um, really clarifies everything. But um, yeah, I think going out with the bang for sure. If nice. all the rumors are to be believed, you know. Well, I'm pleased to hear that there's another bang out coming to the Switch this year. Um, sticking with kind of reviews for come. a moment, though. Has anyone played the latest Call of Duty game? I'm looking at your way, Brody. I think you're probably the most likely out of the bunch. Maybe, Shannon? It I haven't. I downloaded... No. Yeah, the campaign, and then I went back and downloaded the multiplayer, and just it, even with my new fancy gigabit internet, it was still like an hour or two, and I was like, got sidetracked before I could yeah. download, so I just haven't. It doesn't seem to have uh, made a big difference, though. It's still sold very, very well, uh, as you'd expect, so yeah, I don't think it really matters that sentiment is down. Yeah, I, I, like anecdotally, I'm feeling the sentiment is down, but yeah, you're right, Brady, that may not be the case in the grand scheme of things i like i feel like of my group of mates that um you know we've got the the game again group chat going i feel like only half of the usual amount are playing this call of duty but that's obviously a very small sample size and not at all indicative yeah i, I feel Kieran like it's about to to chime in yes i feel I'm like muting <laughs> people play Christmas like these games over Christmas as well so like it's so hard to get an indication True. especially with like the busy october november we've had like i do feel like a lot of people might be grabbing it later yeah than what they normally would have if i can pry myself away from rocket league maybe i will uh i'll play some waiting for you to jump in brody with your lightning mcqueen well look i'm off for the next week so i can have a late night or two so it won't cost me too much we need to set that up uh all right let's get to the more of the big topics of the day and the next on next cab out of the rank is the last of us part two getting a remaster i'm sure we'll all have plenty of opinions on this but in case you missed the news after initially leaking naughty dog then announced the last of us part two remaster coming to the ps5 january 19th next year uh, besides a suite of graphical improvements the remaster will support dual sense features improved loading times deleted scenes commentary a new roguelike survival mode called no return and guitar free play mode so that's just like i think that's just the guitar kind of mini game that was in part two you can just kind of play the guitar freely and perform whatever song you want pretty neat um if you already own the game it's worth noting you can upgrade for 20 bucks here in australia um although sadly it looks like the wlf edition hasn't been announced for australia yet that seems to be coming out other markets but perhaps not how way uh okay shannon gonna come to you first on this do you feel this remaster is necessary at this point in time given the game only came out what like three years ago absolutely you no i I don't think it's (laughs) it's not necessary i don't know if anything is like necessary when you're talking about like remasters or remakes (laughs) i think i think it makes sense like i i honestly can't remember how the last was played on on ps4 or or like ps4 pro or like how it even plays on ps5 like if it has i think it has a 60 fps mode doesn't it but it wouldn't be 4k so like from that point of view like i'd love to play it like 4k 40 but like i don't think the graphical improvements like as much as they're calling it a remaster like i don't think that is what anyone's going to pick this up for like i think they're nice to have if you're playing it for the first time um and i think now we can definitively say that a lot of people will be experiencing this for the first time after watching the Mm. hbo show but the extra content like i feel like that was a really nice surprise to have and it's it's hard to um battle against that for for the 20 dollar fee so i wouldn't say it's necessary but i don't know it's it's yeah, why not? James, if I was to read your body language, I sort of feel like you feel the opposite. Am I am I interpreting that correctly? No, I just so the the twenty dollar thing is good. They've done a good job there, I reckon. <laughs> um just must be. Is this your favorite series? Do you reckon you one? Yes, absolutely. That's I what does it feel th- like I thought that's pretty your obvious. favorite series is more remakes and remasters than actual games. <laughs> How does that feel? Well, yeah, I mean, I guess, like, <laughs> the point... The question wow. I did have in all of this as well is, like, where does this put something like Factions? 
that kind of been kicking along for so long. Like, obviously, we've had conversations around PlayStation's kind of live service, sorry, its game as a service kind of model, um, and then reevaluating that. And obviously, Factions has been kind of caught up in it. But, like, is this this new roguelike survival mode sounds really cool, but it's not what I want from The Last of Us. Admittedly, nor is Factions, I suppose. Like, if I really had to pick what I wanted from the future of this series, it'd be a part three. Um, but I like, I think this makes sense from like a business perspective and kind of capitalizing on the kind of growing fan base that is around the last of us now with the HBO series. It makes sense to have like two of the kind of best versions of the game available on mm. PS5 together. And um, it'd make no sense when it's a part three, like right now, like that would just feel weird in the context of. Yeah. what it is with the show and, and everything like, else i don't feel like this will have substantially delayed part three if that is in fact like on the cards in any capacity like uh, part three i'm not holding out hope is coming out in you know the next two three years it's likely kind of five six i would sort of feel maybe hopefully not that long but Who's, yeah who works on these on all of these naughty dog remasters is it them I saw this one was a way of like training people up on um, the development tools and stuff. I think remake was a part one was different because that was considered like a remake. And I think Naughty Dog took that over. But I, I saw something yeah. about this one being a way to bring newer Naughty Dog people in into the system, like this new mode and <clears throat> graphical improvements. So I don't think it would have any implications on anything else. Yeah. This is definitely like the longest, I think, from for an original game from Naughty Dog, I think was the last of us part two was 2020 right yeah uh, so like yeah, i think we're, sounds right i yeah. think we're due for something for sure like i think what was that before that like uncharted 2 was 20 2009 uncharted 3 was 2011 yeah. lost legacy um and there was lost legacy was i guess a year after 2016 so yeah fair point if you do the math no nah, but yeah um yeah i don't know i i feel like i, I can't help but feel these projects are getting in the way. I mean, maybe they've also like slowed down on their crunch and stuff, which is obviously a good thing too. Um, but this definitely feels like the longest since they've actually put out like a new game. Yeah. Which like, I'm not saying, obviously you're going to think because I've said it, I'm saying that in like a shady way. I'm just saying. No, 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 no. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. To, no, to... I can see Shannon's getting ready to pounce. <laughs> 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 to be honest, when you kind of say like, how does it feel that your beloved series is just kind of getting remakes and remasters? Mm. I'm kind of like, yeah okay that i guess that kind of does like sting a little bit i suppose um but that's also but, coming from a resident evil fan which is yeah barreling towards still that. more original games it's, yeah but it's barreling <laughs> towards it absolutely give it, not. Give it a few years i prepped um, i have the, ratios i'm ready to the, defend myself the what are the ratios kind of it's like a similar trajectory so I don't really have ratio. Huh? <laughs> I think Sorry. it's like you either have to be against the like you either have to be against like Nintendo doing it on Switch and where you and like I, I'm not just saying Resident Evil because you're here, but like Resident Evil Four would get released on everything. Like PS, they'd re-release it and charge again for it. Like you either have yeah. to be okay with I, it or not. I feel board, I feel I like think. the twenty the twenty dollar upgrade aspect of this like justifies the whole thing. Like if they were trying to pay trying to yeah, ask yeah. Full not price for the for graphics this, it'd be but like, the extra okay, stuff. Where do you? Like, where do you draw the line between what's a remake versus a remaster versus a director's cut? Like, I know we were making jokes, but like, I was genuinely kind of confused putting the show notes down and I was writing rem remake, like not thinking about what I was doing. Um, Cause like the lines kind of are blurred. Like it's really not so clean cut. Like this, this could well be a director's cut, right? Like the, and they that did has the been the thing for PS5 so far. Like yeah, Death Stranding and Ghosts like have director's cuts. So like, why not this necessarily? I, like, it's a bit I weird. I guess because it's made a console jump, but, like, I, I don't know. It so kind of needs Ghosts, to be, like, a rude... <clears throat> Go yeah. Ghosts, Ghost did. Yeah, I you're think right. calling it a remaster feels weird because, like, I, there were, like, lots of screenshot memes about comparisons and stuff, and, like, I'm sure that's not going to be that different graphically so like leading with it's that it's literally called on. last of us remastered it's a remaster yeah like but that's even, what i'm saying it's, it's weird like, doing it's that. not like one even that <clears> kind of bothers <throat> me if you can like imagine like a hbo fan kind of going in getting i'm getting a ps5 and i want to play the last of us games and they're like cool here's the remake and here's the remaster uh, you can imagine just a layman kind of going uh okay but, the, but it's just called one yeah, is not called remaster uh, yeah, remake, but this is i guess 
Like that's true. Just called the Last, of us, called the Last of us Part One. Yeah, with well, this is Last of us Part Two remastered. Look, uh, oh my god, they should have just done a collection <laughs> at this point. Honestly. But that is why they had to do a PS5 version. Like no matter what it was called, like there had to be a PS5 version of this game somehow. Like they could have just re-released it on PS5, but then people would be shitting on that if they did nothing. Like you can't win. Yeah. Either way. Um, y- yeah. So I'm glad that I think. I'm glad there's extra content because I, I, yeah, if they led with the graphical stuff and that's it, it would have mm. been silly. On the gra- on the extra content, Kieran, you're also a Last of Us fan. Does the extra content do anything for you? Can you see yourself <laughs> spending? <laughs> am I am I wrong? You're a Last of Us fan, aren't you? I like it. Yeah. No, I. I was just I, not, did, I didn't think I'd ever use those words. Can an extent? Maybe not. Okay. Um, anyhow, does the roguelike survival mode, a guitar free play mode, does that do anything for you? Yeah, I guess so. Like, I'll I'll check it out. Like, I am actually <laughs> like, I am actually genuinely keen to replay the game itself. Mm. So I think that like the opportunity to do that is probably more exciting to me than the extra stuff. But I will I will play around with it. The guitar free play mode, like, apparently you can like play as like different characters and set like the mood with like different environments and different instruments and stuff as well so it's, it's like weirdly comprehensive so i'm kind of keen to see how that goes yeah i'm i'm keen to play this roguelike mode i i kind of imagine it's not going to be as kind of fully fleshed out as i'd like it to be like i'm not firing it up expecting a returnal-esque kind of gameplay loop as well, it's it's kind of just sounds multiplayer like... is it no. i don't think so it kind of yeah. just sounds like mercenaries. Like you pick one of the like yeah. characters from the game and play through like waves or whatever. Taking inspiration yeah. from Resident it Evil in all like angles, I fear. <laughs> <laughs> what do we think of the lost level stuff? Like how do we, how complex do we think that will be? I think that's cool. I think mm. that is the mm. one thing I forgot. If people didn't just randomly throw Resident Evil under the bus, I would have talked about was like, I do <laughs> think it is really cool <laughs> because I don't think developers do that enough. Um, and yeah. Ironically, as a Resident Evil fan, so many fans um, are very, what's the word, like hung up on the cancelled stuff. Like Resident Evil, I don't know if you guys are aware, but there's like almost a whole new game that gets made before the, the next game that gets cancelled amid it and shelved. And um, those prototypes leak and people play them and they're like, oh, I see why it gets cancelled. So I'm interested to see like how rough these kinds of things are. Like I feel like they won't be as rough mm. um, as say some of this stuff that leaks, uh, but it'll be interesting to see like maybe like there might be some extra scene that might give more clarity on something, but you might also see, Oh, that you can see why that's cut. I feel like with deleted scenes a lot when you do watch them, they sound great on paper and stuff, but then you actually watch them and think, Oh, if I put this into the movie, like it would kind of fuck up the pacing or something. Um, so yeah, like, I'm keen to see like how that plays out and if that is something they would do in the future. Um, I feel like it's what part games, one but... was missing, like especially with the HBO show. Like I think that would have been a real opportunity to do something like that, like this there as well. So hopefully it, it adds something. Uh, yeah. I've never like played a game with commentary too, but I would be curious kind of given how big this kind of game is and if there is kind of like chopping like, uh, you know, stuff that they've chopped out of the game, like having the commentary aspect to it, kind of hear that why they made those decisions would be quite interesting too. Um, but yeah, I haven't played the game since it came out. And even then, like it was kind of in the depths of COVID and like a pretty strange situation to be playing a game like that in. So I don't feel like I remember the game as well as I'd like. Um, so yeah, it'd be good to kind of jump into it and dive into it again. There is stuff like I think with Last of Us Two, um, there is stuff that was on the disc that clearly wasn't used. I think there was like different weapons, like throwing knives, um, a new enemy type that was never used, stuff like that. Um, so I'd be keen to see if that kind of stuff gets reinstated for this lost level stuff, mm. or if it's just like let's go pick carrots with Dina. Like, I think it'll be that. Honest, like, I can't see them like breaking yeah. out a new action scene with. Now there's an idea <laughs> well, like a like... farming sim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know but even like say something with with that i think the enemy type was called the screamer or something like even that might have been for one set piece and they they did it they're like we can't really use this for anything else what like, you know yeah 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 i'm keen i'm keen i don't know what else is like kind of slated for january at this point as well but i think that might be a reasonable gap that i could squeeze in mario donkey kong remake better watch out mm, i'll be all right <laughs> Mm, yeah, well. 
<laughs> Early game of the year ten- contender, I'm feeling. Mm. Oh, Absolutely. Don't open that can of worms. Alone in the Dark, Prince of the Persia, The Lost Crown. It is a big month. And then obviously we can't forget Like a Dragon, another one. And most anticipated game nominee, Tekken 8. <laughs> January's loaded, stacked, stacked. <laughs> well, maybe yeah. January's <laughs> in the future will be stacked as well. Should the leaks of Borderlands Four and Teeny Tiny Tiny Tina's Wonderland Two uh, <laughs> eventuate, as leaks might suggest? Uh, the leak comes via the LinkedIn profile of former Lost Boys Interactive technical director Randall Reese, um, who I can imagine has just been burning some bridges right now. Why, do Why does this fucking looking? happen like every Why day? I don't understand. Happening? I don't get it. Yeah. How, if you worked on a game, like if you were the technical director of a game, surely you would know, okay, you know what? This game's not been announced yet. Maybe I don't put it on my public LinkedIn profile. But anyhow, um, Brody, I'm coming to you because I, and I'm always getting this wrong. My memory is terrible. So I'm taking a punt in the dark maybe, but I seem to remember you're a bit of a Borderlands fan. I don't think you were, no, shaking his head, shit. Did, you didn't review Tiny Tina either, did you? No. Kieran did. No, Kieran did? He, he liked no, Borderlands, I think. Don't you, Kieran? Okay. You have dabbled in yeah. the Borderland. <laughs> I, have played, I have played all of them. <laughs> I, I reviewed Borderlands Three, if that's what we're asking, but I didn't like it. Look, I was just gonna, I was just, gonna, <laughs> I don't know. yeah, what was? Like, I was just gonna throw it to Brody. And yeah, Brody, do you have any interest in Doing Borderlands Four, Tiny Tina's Wonderland Two? Would uh, either of these be games you'd excited to have on your radar? Uh, look, no, uh, not really. Um, I do like I've got a passing interest in Borderlands. Like I really liked Borderlands yeah. Two. I thought that was really good. And I've liked their side things like uh, Tales from the Borderlands and New Tales from the Borderlands and stuff. But I just find it so hard to care about that world. Like, I think yeah. to allude to sort of what you're about to ask someone else, like looter shooters just don't really hit for me the way they used to, I don't think. So, um, and and they are pretty long games. Like, you can spend, you know, 80, 100 hours playing Borderlands if you really want to. But yeah, not for me anymore. Maybe yeah. 10 years ago. Because you're obviously like a big Destiny guy. Like, looter shooters kind of feel like they've had their moment. But, I mean, Destiny 2 was in the news this week again because it had a historically low player count. I think it, if I remember correctly, it kind of hit a peak with the launch of Lightfall. Um, but now it's like at a historical low on kind of the, can, the player count on Steam. Very and, dire. Admittedly, I don't think that data goes back terribly far because they moved it to Steam at one point. But... Um, <clears throat> Like taking that, what it is? Do you feel like looter shooters kind of had their moments, and the genre kind of needs to find its place within the modern sort of suite of games? Yeah, it's you'd say there's been a progression of people moving from games like that into what we consider to be the general live service thing, and that doesn't really mm. encapsulate that genre as much. It's more fast, digestible things that don't necessarily have that kind of progression system behind them. So, um. Yeah, I mean, unless a looter shooter like, say, a Destiny can reinvent itself in some way to get people back, or if Borderlands 4 might have a new hook to it or something to get people back in the door. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know where looter shooters necessarily go to uh, recapture that sort of interest. But I don't know. I think there is still, obviously, public uh, desire for Borderlands. Like, Borderlands has always done really well, I think, like, mm. uh, critically somewhat. And I think it definitely sells okay. So, I mean,. Yeah, well, I wouldn't be surprised if it still comes out and does gangbusters. It's just not for, you know, old guys like me, maybe. <laughs> From what I remember chatting to people at the time, though, like Tiny Tina's Wonderland was quite a bit of fun. It's not one I played myself, though. Did anyone on the team here? Yeah, Kieran, you played a bit of it? Yeah, a bit. What yeah. What would you like to see from a sequel? I think I think probably the, the thing I'd like to see the most is it separate itself a bit more from Borderlands. Like... Mm. stylistically and thematically like it had its own thing going but like gameplay wise even though it was like a skin of like a fantasy world it was still very much felt like a borderlands game yeah. i think if, if if they're going to be doing another borderlands and this they need to really kind of differentiate them a little bit more yeah um but other than that like yeah i'll i'll check out another one yeah i think the only way i could kind of get into it is if like the humor changed which i know is probably controversial well, yeah. but 
Like it just never really gelled with me. It's so not my kind of brand of of humor. I just kind of found it a bit kind of crass, <clears throat> and obnoxious. You would have liked it when you were like a uh, twelve, which is like which is. I, how I don't know, I James. I was busy the... reading horrible histories books at that age. I. <laughs> I don't know. I guess yeah, it's a different. It was a different time. I that, that's how I felt about. I felt about three. Like I, I thought the humor was like shit now. But I think some people do still find it funny. Yeah. Um, which it's, like if that's you, that's fine. I guess. But I, there's yeah, there's there's better ways to make people laugh now. Yeah. I feel. Yeah, it's weird because like I like <laughs> humor in games, and I kind of want there to be more like humor in games they can't all be kind of serious like post-apocalyptic affairs but yeah like i don't need it to be kind of so lowbrow as borderlands perhaps is all the time i feel like i feel like the the episodic series like tales from the borderlands did a good job of kind of carving a better sort of sense of humor out of that franchise though i feel like if they kind of took notes from that they could do something better with it yeah again not one i've played you can see i've kind of bounced hard out of borderlands but i've heard i've heard exactly that that people have had a very different experience with tales of the borderlands um all right final topic of the day that i have for you all the ceo of immortals avium developer ascendant studios who laid off nearly half of its staff a couple of months ago has blamed these layoffs on poor game sales due to a crowded release window um we've obviously spoken a lot about just like how big a year it's been for games um and i suppose like you know even just talking about what the release late in january looks like it kind of is hard to find a gap in the schedule to kind of release something uncontested but shannon how hard do you think it is to kind of make money in the games industry now um god i don't know the financials of it and like what we eat, what it costs to make a game and what you need to sell but i i, I think we've spoken yeah at length about like you look at a game like this and I don't think it would have been like a COVID thing where like EA is taking on more games or like, I can't even remember what the developer's background is, but like what their journey to this game was. But I think this game in particular and this year, like we're seeing a lot of games come out this year that sort of were delayed from the last year or two. And that's really created this bottleneck where mm. we've seen so many games move from dates just purely to get away from other games. And then, three or four more will land within a week of it. And I feel like I remember James really loved this game. A lot of people that played it really loved it. But A, like money is an issue now when it wasn't so much an issue throughout COVID where, and, and time again, like people only have certain certain amounts of time to play games. And I think it is games like this that probably fall further down people's lists of what they want to pick up. Um, yeah, and it's just it's such a quick moving space. Like we were already talking about how stacked January is, and we've just had thirty games that we probably still have to play this holiday. Like it's just impossible to keep up. And again, it's it's these types of games that that fall down the list. So I think it's really hard just going off layoffs, which again are just a byproduct of the world we're in at the moment and how things were dramatically flipped on its head. Um, it's obviously really tough unless you're like a small indie studio that finds success um, or those free to play games that take off, which doesn't seem to be happening now. Like I think it's this type of like um, B tier game or like double A game that would be hardest to find success in most. Yeah. I, I kind of worry that it becomes a landscape almost kind of like, cinema is kind of in at the moment and movies where like you have these big kind of tentpole releases from your major studios that kind of you know bring people into the cinema or in this case like have them buy the game but otherwise it's kind of harder for smaller players to kind of live in the gaps um yeah i like james i know you en enjoyed this game in a year of like lots of nines and tens like, is there kind of capacity for people to play, like, a game that might get a 7 or 8 and still, by definition, like, a, a, a good or a great game? Um, or in the case of, like, new IPs, is it just harder for, for those games to get time of day? Um, yeah, I guess. It, I mean, everyone's capacity is different, right? Like, everyone has different time, different money, all that kind of thing. But mm -hmm. um, obviously, if with Immortals, um, it is a new IP. Uh it isn't a style of gameplay, I guess, that's going to gel with everybody. 
um it's it's a lot like for spoken in a lot of ways uh you know it's in terms of just even the magic element to it all but yeah i um like i don't i don't blame people for not giving it a shot like it can be hard um but i mean i don't really know what else i could say but yeah would like, you encourage people to give it a, give the game a go still yeah like absolutely like i still love it i still think it's really solid it really scratched like a metroid itch for me that i wasn't expecting to scratch like at all mm. um but yeah i i i mean yeah the, the plot is a, a, like a tad predictable uh but i think overall the gameplay definitely makes up for it yeah um but i guess with this game as well it, it, there, it there is an intersection there it was kind of being geared as like a cod game but with magic right um, and I'm not too sure if like that audience cares for that no. kind of element, um, which is a shame because it is, like I said, the combat is quite fun, very fast, very frenetic. Um, I think you kind of likened it to Doom at the time when you should yeah, the, the, the Yeah, it was very fast, like it's fast paced like Doom and you are juggling a lot of different weapons abilities and stuff and that can be tough for people. Yeah. Um, I, I also... But I definitely still think... Well, I was okay. just going to say marketing. Like, I don't think this game had any marketing anywhere. Like, and obviously that might've been, they just didn't have money or EA didn't want to sink money. So into it, much but of like... games is marketing as well. Like I can understand why you don't want to spend all that money. Cause you can't, I mean, I don't know. Can you, if a game is really fucking shit, will marketing save it? If you well, not look this at, game is look, that. But, yeah. I was, yeah. You know, I think you look <laughs> yeah, at like yeah. the shitty iPhone games that have like all the TikTok ads and they're not even what the game is. Like, I think you can, mm. you can market your way to success. Like, not with this because it's a bit different. But like, if you've got no marketing, it's very hard to get cut through. It's like a new IP. Yeah. I feel like it is. I also think like you're right. Yeah, our IP was one hundred and nine ninety five. So obviously, um, I don't know if that's a big ask or not. But it does feel it. It feels like it earns that money. Do you know? Like, you mm. know, you play some games and they feel budget. This doesn't feel budget in any way. Um, it's a really yeah solid game. So it's it, it's it sucks that it hasn't I guess been appreciated as much. Like, but. It's just how the cookie crumbles. Yeah. It seems. Brody, how do you think kind of smaller studios make inroads kind of in the industry and kind of build some notoriety amongst gamers? I would say hit your wagon to like a publisher if you can, but I mean, this was EA and like you said, mm. there was no marketing for it at all. Um, so I don't know. I don't have the answer for that, I'm afraid, but yeah, it is a very competitive space. Like, I was just thinking about like the last question. Like if you look at say how Embracer is going at the minute, you'd almost say there isn't a market mm. for these middle tier double A games because they're hemorrhaging money and laying people off left, right and center. And that's been their whole business model up until this point. So I don't know. It's very, it's just tough out there. I think Shannon's right though. It's like, it's a sign of the times in a way, like the financial state of everything. Like it's just harder to justify playing so many games these days. Yeah. I wonder if you kind of need to take like, you know, gradually kind of work your way up to like as big a release as something like Immortals of Avium is. Like maybe you need to kind of take a house mark approach and kind of do like those smaller kind of arcade style games until you build a bit of reputation and then you can do something like Returnal. They, they've always or, had like um, Sony backing though, haven't they? Yeah, true. Yeah. So or like I mean... maybe like Ninja Theories, maybe an example, like, uh, doing Hellblade. Like maybe, you know, that was obviously a very slick sort of looking game. Uh, and now I guess they've got the backing of Xbox and we're expecting the next to be bigger and, and bolder. But, you know, maybe if you're going to do something kind of as polished as that, trying to kind of limit its scope somewhat um, mm. is, a, is a savvy way to go about it. I, I wouldn't say, like, I, I didn't play all of Immortals. Like, I played it in preview at uh, Summer Game Fest. I don't think it really from what i played i played it for maybe an hour i don't think it was trying to do too much like i don't think it would have been mm -hmm. it definitely felt like big budget and it felt expensive but that was probably more a visual thing like i don't know if i don't know maybe james can correct me but it didn't seem like it would have been hugely taxing like it wasn't throwing new mechanics at you every five minutes and stuff like that i don't think from what i saw it kind of it, it kind of was but in a in a good way like right. it was, I don't know. You you didn't get the impression though that it was just like an insanely big scope a release for, for the publish for the developer. From what I played, no, but no, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Once I I, I did I thought maybe they were biting off more than they could chew when it opened up and became semi-open. You know, 
Um, but yeah. Look, yeah. it's not the first. I guess if we had the answers, we would probably be more successful than we are. So mm. <laughs> it's it's telling. Um, Kieran, do you have any thoughts on uh, this topic at all? Uh, not really. Not yeah, anything Kieran. that hasn't been <laughs> anything that hasn't been said. Like I feel like I feel like there is still some opportunity. Obviously, for those like I, I think like today, um, Focus Entertainment announced that a Plague Tale Requiem did like three million copies sold, mm. which like I feel like that's in the same level as something like Immortals of Avium, that kind of double A to triple A space. Um, so yeah. I feel like you can find success there. But that game, like again, it comes down to marketing. Like people were talking about that game when it launched, um, and a lot of those games that do find that success in the on the smaller scale, like tend to have a, a some kind of virality or some kind of conversation around them and that was definitely missing with this so yeah i will say like x i think xbox do do a pretty good job of like kind of building up these kind of new titles and new ip somewhat out of necessity i might might add don't know why i said necessity so weird um but yeah like i guess they've not been immune to um to layoffs as well but even, you know, the way they've kind of supported, like, Rare to do Sea of Thieves, do something a bit different, or, like, Obsidian with Grounded. Like, I think that's all, that's been a really cool thing. Um, I think they can because of Game Pass, though. Like, that's the difference. Like, you can, yeah. there's no losing, really. Yeah, true. And it kind of benefits, I suppose, to, like, have something that's ongoing. So, saying, keep people using that, that subscription. Yeah, very, very good point. All right, well, before we get to today's rapid fire question, I do want to tell you more about these new Steel Series mics that we're using. As you know, we're big fans of Steel Series stuff. We've got headsets and peripherals as well. Uh, and these new alias mics are fantastic for gamers like us who want a professional sounding audio quality without the complexity of a studio grade setup. Uh, so there's two new mics in the range. There's the Alias, which I'm using with the USB connection, and the Alias Pro that Shannon's got, uh, which connects via XLR to a nice little DAC with easy access to gain, volume controls, and mute controls. Um, both use a capsule that's three times bigger than most other mics on the market, and together with their Sonar AI noise cancelling software, cancel out a lot of your unwanted audio. Um, hopefully, Shannon, that means we hear fewer barks from your dogs but i suppose that depends just nothing yet <laughs> they've been barking this whole episode and it's just been <laughs> quiet on your end, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> they could come bundling through the door and then there's no stopping them uh but the rapid fire question i have for you all today a closed alpha playtest is happening early december for suicide squad to kill the justice league it's uh Long been discussed here on the show, uh, but you can register now. All the details on how to do so are at pressart.com.au, of course. Brody, do you have any interest in getting your hands on the game come early December? Yeah. Oh, okay. Shannon? Yeah, I think it's been a while since there's been anything like this. I'm, I'm keen for it. it yeah, I, I'll bad. say I'm like morbidly curious it's the and new like redfall baby surprised we're in i can't i was gonna say it can't be worse than redfall or karma soup but <laughs> i was i was like going to kieran are you do you have an itch to scratch i think before the, the trailer they, they and what about suicide squad, squad? <laughs> <laughs> i think i think like a couple of weeks ago i would have said no but after like the newest like deep dive they released i'm kind of keen okay cool james yeah look i'll 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 play anything once, but I don't know if this will be the time <laughs> that I'll play it. Um, I'd say that yeah. that was kind of a lukewarm to warm reception. Like that's that's kind of more positive than I thought we were going to get on that. You know, so even maybe maybe Suicide Squad is winning us around gradually. Uh, anyhow, now it's time for what the wiki, the press up podcast game show, where the previous week's winner reads part of a Wikipedia page for an unknown game, and we the contestants must guess the game. The first person to guess two games correctly bags the points and wins the round uh speaking of those points we currently have james in the lead on 33 points brody in second place on 30 points shannon on 29 kieran on 27 myself on 25 and harry and james w tied in last place with one point a piece sadly still no one nil pois we really is anyone's bring... game Someone on the show just for them to not guess any games correctly and that I can have the, the enjoyment of saying nil pois, plenty more. Uh, as last week's winner, though, James is in the hosting chair today. 
Exciting. He is. <laughs> mm. um, there was a theme, but now there's not. That's my announcement <laughs> for, the, for today. Why is that? Can did we you know change why? the games or did you just decide there's no There theme? probably weren't enough games it'll maybe all, to... It'll all, it'll all make sense. Fulfill the theme. She wants it all. Okay. Yeah. Are we ready? Yes. Mm. Yeah. Okay. The gameplay in this game retains its traditional combo-based mechanics. The basic elements of combos are openers. Uh, I'm going to skip this. The game is a reboot of the series. Shannon. It's from... Oh. Yes, Shannon. Is it Devil okay. May Cry? Yeah. It's oh. not Devil May Cry. Uh, Brody. Oh, is, was you next? Brody. Oh. Well, you and did queue up, but is he receiving? Yeah, no, no, no. I'm, I'm still willing to vote if you'll have me. Okay. <laughs> It's not a vote, but yes, true, you can uh, guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> is it Mortal Kombat 1? It's not Mortal Kombat 1. Okay. Brody. I want to say Killer Instinct. It is Killer Instinct. Well done. Well done, wow. Brody. Nice. I'll take that. Turns 10 this week, um, and there's an wow. update coming for it. The update everyone's been waiting for, I'm sure. I was wondering Crazy. where that has gone. Why is mm. it back? Why is it back? Yeah. yeah, it is. I think it's cool they're updating it. Like, who would have thought, to be honest? Who could be bothered? But obviously, the developers. So, win for everyone. Hope it works out for them. Are we ready? Yes. <laughs> so, Brody's on one. He's That's gearing great. for this second okay. game. Mm, yeah, I can see it. He's frothing. Okay. The <laughs> game. <a> clean sweep. <laughs> If you want to watch the video for podcasts, that's the reason too. Um, okay, the ga- the game is a fighting video game and the third in its series. Um, it was the first in the series to be developed by the original developer. You're not going to get it, Shannon, but sure. Tekken 3. No. Unlike the previous game in the series, the game's soundtrack is completely changeable. Wow. It was released for Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. The game is less wrestling orientated than the previous games, and the game's executive producer has stated he did not feel the wrestling and other themes went particularly well with each other. The gameplay is similar to EA Chicago's Fight Night Round 3, featuring a focus on... Shannon, can I go again? Yes, Shannon. UFC 3. No. (laughs) Can I just keep (laughs) guessing? (laughs) (laughs) Can I actually... The game features 29 playable characters, including real-life people and unique original ones created for this game. Uh, <laughs> this sentence. Yeah. Funkmaster Flex also appears as a non-playable character. Oh. Other playable characters include Big Boy, Red Man, Sean Paul, T.I., and The Game. Oh, Are you sure this is it's... a video game? Oh. Oh. I have to go to the I Wikipedia page. Nothing. I thought you guys would have got it already. I know it, but it's the title. Oh, God, I'm searching for it. Okay, let's keep going. The game makes unique use of synesthesia-inspired mechanics for a fighting game, in which there is a level interactivity between music and the stages, where hazards and the entire backdrop moves to the beat of the music. It's Shannon. Different I don't, events I don't know occur. I'm just going gonna... to... Is, is, it, is it... Is Def Jam the series? Def, Def Jam 3. Brody. Cool. Brody. Is it Def Jam Vendetta? No. Is that oh. a game? Have I made that up? We're close. Uh, yeah, no, you're, you're there. You're close. Ewan. Also, is it has it... Ghostface Killer in it. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Tell me when I'm back in. Uh, uh, I think I'm we're at the I'm point where we're just guess. rapid fire right. guessing. <laughs> Go, Ewan. Go. Is it Death Jam Vengeance? No. Oh, oh. That's what I was going to say. I wondered if Brody was like that close. <laughs> I wonder if like how do I how do we do this? We need to have like a system. Brody. We do. It's not a number. Give us a clue. No. Ah, <laughs> uh, Brody. Yes. Uh, well, you've thrown <laughs> me with that. I was going to say Def Jam Fight for New York or whatever it's called. I think that's the first. I think that one. is. Oh, that's it. actually so close. Yeah, that's, no, it's, it's not very that. close. It's not that. No, nah, it's not. Jam... It's not close. I, I, I'm more impressed that he remembered a title in this series. Thanks. Okay, that is a title. It's literally Def Jam. One word. Okay. What's oh. the first letter? <laughs> Def Jam uh, Battles. No. How many How many syllables? <laughs> I feel like first letter is better. Just give us first letter. Two. Go. Two first syllables. Uh, oh. Okay. It's going to be, as soon as I say it, everyone's Sounds in, like... okay? <laughs> Do we just say the game name? Or... First. 
The first letter is I. Shannon. I. Brody. Yes. Def Jam Shannon. Ignite. Brody. No, Brody. Def Jam Icons. It is Def Jam Icons. Oh, oh. well done, Brody. Oh, God. <laughs> wow. Wowee. I I'm think impressed that, I knew what Def Jam was, to be honest. I think that <laughs> qualifies as a clean sweep, Brody. So that yeah. means you get yeah, the bonus does. point Big. and you go up to I was first hangry place, for it. tied I'll with be honest, James. I was hangry for it. Huge. I wanted it bad. Thank you. It is huge. James just Did you guys desperate also for know? anyone else to get that. What was the theme? There was Fighting games. Game. No? So I actually had a Def Jam rap style there too, because they, they put that game out. You could you could film yourself rapping on oh. the Xbox Vision camera, upload wow. it to a platform, and then become famous. You mean there I was a use that. for the, the game... Xbox Vision camera outside of wanking on Uno? Uh, yes. <laughs> wow. And, um, but then the, the company who made the game got sued for $8 million because they didn't actually have the rights to any of the music. That's awesome. So... <laughs> The game shut down. Yeah, I started with Def wow. Jam games, and I gave up because I thought no one will get this. So <laughs> that would have been obscure. It was a good. Cred- yeah. I mean, credit to you, Brody, because like Def Jam Vendetta and Def Jam Five in New York were, were the other two. Like, are they? Yeah. Fuck on yeah. Def yeah. Jam. Yeah, they are. That's that's, n- that's unusual. That's not like me, but please. I played the shit out of those on PS2. Just not whatever the other one was, Def Jam Idiots. I icons. thought it was going to be Rumble oh, no. Roses for a second. <laughs> Def Jam So did, I thought Rumble Roses oh, yeah. too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's classic. Absolutely. They don't make enough mud wrestling games. <laughs> not anymore. And with anyway. that, let's bring an end to what was this week's episode of the Press Start Podcast. Once again, brought to you by Steel Series and their new range of A-list microphones. Subscribe to us on Listener or the podcast service of your choice. Follow us at Press Start AU and visit the site at pressstart.com. Dot au. We've been joined today by Shannon. Uh, yeah, you can follow me at Shannon Grixty. James? Uh, yes, you can follow me on X at, at James, A-T-J-A-M-Z. Kieran? Uh, yeah, Hash Brown on X. And bagging the points, it was Brody. Thanks, you can follow me on most things at Brody underscore DG. Now, Ewan didn't feel the need to spotlight a good homegrown game, so my review for Knuckle Sandwich will be uh, up on the site by the time you read this, and I'll be gushing to about it. To be fair, it. no one told him. That's, yeah, that's that's all that was. <laughs> I told him I was editing the review this when I got here. This is not some grand anyway. conspiracy. The show notes were at a lock at that point. I'll so. talk about it next week. I'll talk about it next week. But either way, all right. phenomenal. Love it. I'll gush about it on Twitter. Okay, cool. Awesome. Mm. I look forward to that. I look forward to hearing more about it next week from you. I've been your host, Ewan Roxburgh. You can follow me on socials at Ewan underscore Roxburgh. Thanks again for tuning in. And until next time, happy gaming. Feel the steel. Bye.